Welcome to the Successful Nurse Coach Podcast. On this podcast, Laura and Shelby, both board certified nurse coaches, show you how to make as much money as you want in private practice as a nurse coach. Welcome to the Successful Nurse Coach Podcast. This is Laura, and today I'm here alone, and our topic is going to be the successful nurse coach method. So first, I want to preface this by saying that that this method that we created was really um, a labor of love by Shelby and I. So Shelby and I have coached so many nurse coaches. And before we decided to launch our program, The Preceptorship, we wanted to get crystal clear on what our method was. What is the method that we see that works best for new nurse coaches to follow to create clients. And this method comes from The Prosperous Coach by Rich Litvin. It comes from a little bit of Stacey Bayman. It comes from some of Preston Smiles. It comes from another coach of mine. Um, So it comes from a lot of different places. And we really created it for nurses, for the nurse brain. And this is what we have found works. We just recently had uh, one of our year-long clients make $8,300 in her first four weeks. We've had some of our year two clients have $24,000 months, $32,000 months. So there's, there's proof at this point that this method really, really works. And so I'm so excited to share it with you guys and, and give you a framework to begin to, to, to begin your own process. So the successful nurse coach method, it has five steps. And I'm going to just go over briefly each step. In our programs, we spend hours and hours and hours on each of these steps going deeper. But just for this podcast today, we're going to give you the secrets. We're going to give you our our proprietary system. We aren't going to hide anything. We want nurse coaches making money. Um, Part of our why is that we know that if a nurse coaching practice doesn't become healthy, if it doesn't become sustainable, then we're going to have so many incredible nurse coaches that have to quit or can never leave their full-time jobs and we won't be able to help people. So our role in the nurse coach community is to create the best, the fastest, the most effective way that you guys can learn to sell coaching, to get enroll people into the magic and the medicine that you can provide. The first step in our method is connecting. Now, connecting is talking to human beings. It can be connecting with people that we know. It can be connecting with acquaintances and strangers. And there's primarily two ways that we can connect in the world. And because of COVID, we, a lot of people really resorted to online connecting and you can do a combination of both. So in-person connecting and online or, or location independent connecting, both require you to begin relationships with other human beings. So there's lots of ways that we can connect. My entire first year in my private practice was all in person. And so ways that I connected was hosting community events and inviting people through different platforms to come to in-person community events where I would provide something of value and then invite them into coaching conversations and start relationships with them. I made a list of professionals in my area that would be great referral sources for my type of coaching. And I went to all those professionals and I offered them two coaching sessions. And I connected with them through their email. I went into their offices. I dropped off Um, cards. I followed up with them. I would talk to people at the gym. I would talk to people in the sauna. We, you connect with people everywhere you go. You connect with your hairdresser who already knows you and you tell them what, what it is that you're doing. Hairdressers are incredible referral sources because they talk to a lot of humans. So we can connect to all the people in our, our city that are around us that we already know in person. And then we also can utilize social media to connect online. And and most successful nurse coaches do a combination of both. 
but we have several who only connect online. We have several who only connect in person and we, most people do some version of both. Now connecting online is more nuanced. Um, it requires us to have some writing skills. So within our courses, we have a copywriting webinar and we teach a little bit of copywriting, but copywriting essentially is just selling through your words, learning how to tell stories, deciding to be visible about your own life and who you are so that you can connect with other humans you don't know in the online space through your posts and through messaging them. Connecting should feel like an extension of who you are. It shouldn't feel forced. Um, you don't have to be professional. You just have to be you. People hire coaches that they know, like, and trust. And so the more authentic, the more you you can be, um, the easier it is to connect. So connecting is usually what we see is the hardest part for new nurse coaches, especially introverts, especially people who are more homebodies. We have to get creative, but it can absolutely be done. And eventually you'll learn to love connecting. Step number two in our method is the invite. So one thing that I did not know when I started my business is that 99% of my clients would become my clients because I asked them, not because they found my website and inquired about my services. Eventually in your practice, you'll get to a point where your clients come to you, but that takes a long time. It takes a very long time to get to that place. So all new nurse coaches need to learn how to authentically invite and in the power of the invitation. So you have to ask people to experience your coaching. You can't tell them about it because coaching is experiential. So you can invite people that you know, you can invite people that you don't know, and you get to invite them into the next step, which is called powerful conversation number one. Um, part of the ways that I would invite is if I was talking to somebody and I said, you know, I noticed that you're struggling with this. This is actually something that I do. And I would love to invite you in to experience a coaching conversation. No strings attached. My entire business is created from word of mouth and referrals only. And so if you like our session, I just ask that you share it with somebody that might need it at some point. So it's zero pressure. There's no sales. You're literally inviting people to spend 60 minutes with you to be seen, to be heard, to be loved on, to be witnessed. It's, it's an amazing gift. A gift of 60 minutes of the presence of another human being is so rare and so valuable. So our method leverages service. We don't teach you how to, to sell or to market. We teach you how to serve. This method requires you to spend $0 on advertising because you're gonna to learn to do it all organically before you start to hire advertisers or go in these other ways to create clients. So the invite is, I would love to invite you to a 60 minute conversation, no strings attached. And if, if it serves you or you enjoy it, all I ask you to do is to refer anybody to me that you think could benefit. So then you invite everybody into the first free conversation, which is called powerful conversation number one. Sometimes you'll hear the term discovery call and hey, there's a lot of ways to do this, this to, to create clients and coaches teach all different ways. This is what we have found works best for new nurse coaches in their creating their first 10 to 20 clients. After that, you might change and create your own system that works better for you. And perhaps you only do do one power, powerful conversation instead of two. So powerful conversation number one, I'm just going to give you the, the outline of kind of what does this call look like? What do you do for 60 minutes with this human? The first aspect of this is who are you being before you start that session? Um, it can be really nerve wracking in the early days to do sessions. You're nervous. What if they don't like it? What if you don't know what to say? What if they don't think it's powerful? What if they don't get anything from it? What if they don't talk? What if it's awkward? Um, those are all a lot of thoughts about you, the coach. And for the next 60 minutes in powerful conversation, number one, your job is not to think about you. Your job is to think about this client in front of you. 
So anytime you find yourself getting really nervous and in your head, it's because you're being self-centered. So you don't have to be self-centered. You get to take a break from your own brain and all those thoughts, and you get to lovingly focus on another human being. So first, you're going to get really clean before the call. We have all sorts of tricks and tips that we teach, but you're going to clean up your own energy, your own thoughts into a service mindset. Um, What I like to do, I always like to bring the spiritual in, is I like to ask God or source for this next 60 minutes, make me an instrument of your will. What, how can I be everything that this person needs in this moment? I trust that every question, every thought, everything that I come with will be supported and I'm not doing this alone. So get your energy really clean before the call. Your job is to listen. Your job is to be really, really curious And your job is to serve. Your job is not to think about you. It's not to think about selling. It's not to think about if you're good or you're bad. You can reflect after powerful conversation, number one. And we have you do that in our programs. You can reflect after it and think about you, but you don't get to think about you for that that first hour. You're going to be thinking about your client. Then you're going to set up agreements. You know, if someone's never had coaching before, you're going to set up that conversation so they understand how different it is than a normal conversation. So you set up your agreements with that client, what what the agreements are for that conversation. Then start with a really powerful question. And some of my favorites are, what is the heaviest thing that you're carrying right now? What should I ask you to make this conversation extraordinary? If we were going to talk about one thing for the next 60 minutes that would change your life the most, what would it be? So these questions are meant to get to the the main thing that comes to mind when they think of something that they want to shift or or grow or change in their life. Um, Then you can go and you can assess some other areas. You can use that first powerful question to have a starting point and then just get really curious and assess and ask more questions about them. And that's really what you're going to do for the first 30 to 40 minutes is really ask about where they are. The goal of the first conversation is to get clear on what problem your coaching is going to solve for them. What action can your client take to get results before your second conversation? Start to get an idea of where they are now and where they're going. We call that the gap. What is their gap? That is your goal and that is your job to to find out where they are now and where they're going. If this person is someone that you want to help and you think you can help and that you enjoy spending time with, Then towards the end of the conversation, tell them that you would love to offer them a second free call. Tell them that you would love to give them some homework and that you'd love to see them in the next seven to 10 days. Try not to make it longer than that because there's a half-life of enthusiasm and invite them into a second call. Um, If they say yes, then book their follow-up call right then on the spot. Don't let them email you of availability. Don't send them your link. Have them commit to the second session. Get it scheduled. Get it locked in right there. And then create agreements about the homework. Say, before you come to our second call, do you agree to this, these, this field work or this homework that we've both co-created? And go ahead and book the call. You know, actions prove who someone is. Words just prove who they want to be. How many times have you read a powerful book or taken a course and done nothing with it? Primary focus of coaching is, is action right? Maybe there's a lot of internal work that happens, but eventually there's going to be external circumstances that happen because of your coaching. So assign some homework that will stretch them, that will have them do something that will create a shift. Um, some There's different types of homework, and I can give you just some examples, like education or learning types of homework. So if your client's primary gap requires information that they don't currently have or know, then you can offer a YouTube video or listening to a podcast or maybe a short book, um, something that gives them the information that they need. It's not your job to teach, but it's your job to have them commit to learn. If there's if there's an actual skill that they're missing or information that they need, um, make it be their homework to get that information and report back to you. Clarity. Sometimes clients don't know. They're like, I, I don't know what I need. I know I want my life to change. I don't know what I want to do with my life. I don't know who I want to be. Have them do some homework for clarity. You know, have them write about their their top three role models. Who do you admire? Who impresses you? 
ask about people who've impacted them in their life and, and why. And then what qualities do they want to emulate or have for themselves? Sometimes we can do self-awareness homework um, in the, the health coaching world. This would be your food journal, exercise journal, a budget, um, thought work. You can assign any homework to help them get more self-aware to support change. And then the other type of homework is just accountability. If your client knows exactly what he or she needs, but has not been able to take action or be consistent with action, then create a SMART goal. And you can have them um, email you every morning between, between that session and the next session and then review those on the next call. But the goal is to have them believe and then take action. So they stay connected to you between your powerful conversation number one and the next step which is powerful conversation number two. So powerful conversation number two is totally different than powerful conversation number one. You're going to set up this call different than the first call right out of the gate. In this call, you have no promises that you aren't going to sell them something or enroll to sell them. And this conversation has just two goals. You have to get their gap so clearly defined that they feel like you know it better than they do. So your goal in this call is to get super clear on exactly where they are and where they want to go. Um, if you think about powerful conversation number two, you're going to get on the call. You're going to check in, ask them what they want to celebrate about this last week. Have them tell you about their wins. Their brain's going to realize, gosh, since I've met Laura, since I've met this coach, I've already had the, this shifts in my life. You're basically having them show proof of what your conversation created for them. Then you're going to check in with their homework. And then you're going to really, really work on, for the next 30 minutes, getting them to tell you where they want to be in a specific amount of time. So if you're selling a three-month coaching program, you can say, in 90 days, tell me if, if everything goes perfect, if you knock it out of the park with all your goals and, and you just are killing it in your life, what would your life look like in 90 days? And have them describe in detail. What does it feel like? What are people noticing about them? What's changed? How do they feel? What's their bank account look like? How are their relationships? Um, how do they feel when they look in the mirror? Have them describe their dream. Have them describe their vision of the future. And what your job is on this call is to propose that dream to come true. So we spend lots of hours and we have lots of information in our course about this call and about this process, but this is the call um, where you sell them their dream. You know, coaching is selling the invisible. There's nothing tangible, you know, and we can't really make any guarantees, but we can guarantee that someone has the best chance of reaching their vision when they're with us. Ultimately, it's completely up to them, but we create the conditions where it's more highly likely that it's going to happen. Okay, so one of the things that scares new coaches the most is selling, is saying, hey, I, I charge this and, and I can, do you have a credit card and do you wanna pay me? And that terrifies us. But you notice that in this process, we don't even start selling until we've spent two hours with a human. So we don't sell coaching. All that we do is invite people to continue the relationship we've already created. This takes a lot of pressure off of us as newer people in sales. Our job as coaches is bridging the gap in people's lives. When you begin to tell your client about the solution, you give them basically a prescription. For example, client says, I really, really want to lose weight. And so you say, okay, this is what we're going to do. First, we're going to create the, the perfect diet for you. Not the diet that somebody else gives you, but the diet that we co-create together that you feel in your bones is best for your body. Then we clearly write that out and we create an accountability plan so that in the early stages of changing your habits, that you're held accountable. Then we're, I'm going to give you weekly things to read to keep you inspired, to keep you connected to your vision. We're going to take a beautiful picture of you from your past that you love, and we're going to place it three different places in your home. So you're constantly reminded when things get difficult, why you want to change your habits. We're going to work on your vision, your mindset, skill set. We're going to teach you how to make some delicious new foods. We're going to make sure you have extra energy and a strategy around working out and moving your body. 
We're going to hit this from so many different angles. It'll be impossible for you to fail this time. I 100% believe in your vision and I can't wait for you to tell me how good you feel. Is that something that you'd be interested in hearing more about? So we have this transition from bridging the gap, giving them the solution and getting them all excited about their future. And we go from a transition to go into the proposal. One of these transitions could be, okay, so after hearing all the details, I would love to coach you. Would you like to hear more about that? Or even simpler, moving forward, what kind of support do you think you need? On a scale from one to 10, how committed are you to making this happen for yourself? Because I only work with nines or tens and I just, I'd love to work with you, but I'm really curious on where you are right now today. And then they say, they give you permission. They say, yeah, I would like to, yeah, tell me how much you cost or what would it look like? That's where you say your offer. And we we have a, a method to help you create your offer, the details of your offer, so you know it inside and out. And you say your offer and then you pause and you let them have their thoughts and you don't break the silence. And I think for, for, for me, that was a really, that was the scariest thing about this whole process is how do I go from serving to oh, selling? Because I had had terrible MLM experiences. I hated selling. I hated salespeople. I hated the way it felt to be, to be sold to. And so this was really difficult for me. It was not easy for me. But these beautiful transitions made it easier once I learned that there's a, a, an unclunky and authentic way to transition. So let your client have their thoughts without you breaking the silence. After you do the proposal, you're going to go into the, the last part of the successful nurse coach method, which is navigating resistance and overcoming objections. It is normal after you say your offer for clients to have thoughts. If change was easy, nobody would have any things to be coached about. So we expect objections. We expect resistance, not because we're not amazing coaches, not because we don't believe in our client, but because we know how the human brain behaves. It, nothing has gone wrong if your client has resistance. Nothing has gone wrong if your client has objections. Where novice nurse coaches tend to... Um, need more coaching and support around is how do you overcome objections and how do you navigate resistance from a place of service? You don't overcome objections because you're trying to make a bunch of money. People will feel that, they can sense it, they can smell it. And we did not become nurse coaches to be sharks trying to get money from people that don't want to spend time with us. But it is our job to stay in the coach role. It is our job that as they have resistance, as they start having objections, that we hold that vision that they just so clearly described to us. And we coach them into that. And we can ask, say, I, let's, for, for example, let's give that the number one objection could be, oh, that's a lot of money. I, I don't have that in my budget. Um, shocker. Nobody has a coaching budget. Okay, no one comes to the call with an extra two, three, four, five, ten thousand dollars sitting around in their coaching budget account. It's just it's not how the brain works. So that's not a, a, a uncommon objection. If the client says, you know, that's a lot of money, I, I just don't know if I can afford that. Say, can I coach you around that? Seek permission. And don't stop coaching them because sometimes it's just not true. And navigating uh resistance and overcoming objections is many, many hour course. And, and there's lots and lots of information around it. But the essence that I want you to get from this view from 10,000 feet is that we don't stop taking a stand for our client's vision when their brain predictively creates resistance. We don't stop. We stay in service to them. We stay in service to that vision. Um, and there's, this is a really nuanced process and you're going to get better and better and better and better at it the more resistance that you get to, to coach through. Um, let's say that a client says, yes, how do I pay you? Um, great. Be prepared to allow them to pay right there. There's a half-life of enthusiasm. If a client says yes, the faster that they pay you, the, the more likely they're going to follow through because here's the thing. You can be so ex you can be on fire after your coaching call. Drive home walk into a really, really messy house and maybe something that the fridge starts acting funny. Immediately your brain goes, oh, I cannot hire a coach right now because I might have to replace the fridge. And this is just life. Like there's always going to be more reasonable things to spend money on 
when you've never invested in yourself before. So there's a half-life of enthusiasm. You want people to pay you as soon as possible. And honestly, people are not a yes until their, their commitment money has, has cleared your bank account. Until the money is in my bank account, a person is not my client, even if they've signed a contract. The commitment comes in the form of the check. The commitment comes in the form of the payment. That's the, that's the all in. And if a client says no, ask them more about that. Often the reason people say they can't is the reason that they must. Ask for permission to explore. Um, tell them, do you mind if I coach you through this? And I just want you to know I am totally unattached to this outcome, but I want to make sure that your no is a, is, a, is a hell no and it's an empowered no and I'm just curious. Um, a lot of times, once you start coaching them in their no, they will start to hear how ridiculous their no sounds. And it's just an opportunity for, for so much growth and for them to know so much about themselves. And I want to remind you, when people say no to your coaching, it's not about you. This is an opportunity to take a stand for your client's vision. Playful out here as if this dream dies here on the table if you don't explore all the options. If you can't help them, who is? Chances are their life will be exactly the same in 90 days. Their, their life will be exactly the same in a, a year. Don't let their first objection or their natural resistance stop you in your tracks and make it about you. We're going to go deeper into this in our programs, but the most common resistant points and objections are, I need to ask my husband or my wife. And this is a very common response. And just ask why. Like make sure they're a hell yes and they're just asking, that, letting their partner know about their decision that, to work with you. Um, I love to coach my clients around this because so many, I mean, me included, oh my gosh, when I told my husband I wanted to hire my first coach, um, I was terrified. And Shelby will tell, you know, in her story, she talks about this. But I, if, if I had had a little bit of coaching, I would have come to him differently. So don't go to your partner and seek permission because if you're unsure, your partner sure as hell is going to be unsure if you should spend whatever amount of money on this coach. So you can ask your client, can I give you some pointers on how to have this conversation? I've coached a lot of people around making this decision and also experienced it myself in my own marriage. And I just want to give you some pointers. And before I do that, I want to make sure that right in this moment, you're a hell yes. You are all in, but you really feel that you need to ask your husband because you have an agreement about discussing things before you spend money. They say, yes, I'm heck, I'm all in, Laura. All right, perfect. I want you to tell your partner about our conversation. I want you to tell your partner about our vision. I want you to tell your partner you're 100% in. And then I want you to ask your, your partner to support you, not ask permission. That's such a different energy. It's like this, I had this experience today. I have this vision in my head. I'm more on fire right now than I've been about my own life or this, this thing in a long time. And I know with every bone in my body that I want to do this. And I'm asking you to please support me. We'll, we'll figure it out. That's so much different than, hey, babe. Uh, yeah, so um, remember I told you about that coaching thing? It's, it's a lot of money. Um, but you know, I'm thinking about doing it. Do you think I should do it? And, and your, your partner has, didn't meet with the coach, has never experienced coaching most times, does not know what the heck you're talking about. And say you say your price is $1,500 for, for nine or eight weeks. And then he goes, so it's how much per hour? Like it doesn't make sense to them. So you really have to, to, to coach your clients into not seeking permission, but seeking support. Next major objection is the money. Um, maybe they say, I don't know how I'm going to justify the money. Yeah, tell me more about that. What does it mean when you say you don't have the money? Are they going to be homeless? Are they going to have to tap into their savings? Are they going to have to not buy the granite countertops this month? Are they going to have to postpone their vacation for two months to change their life? And you say, I'm priced in this way on purpose. I want this investment to be uncomfortable for you. Are you willing to get creative in figuring it out? And how much money will you save in the long run? That's a, a really interesting one because I don't know about you guys, but especially in the years of being overweight, you know, what do you do when you're, when you're overweight and uncomfortable in your body? You spend money on all sorts of crap to make you feel better because the root cause of your discomfort isn't being addressed. There's so many ways that coaching saves money that you, could, you would never think of it actually saving you money. So sometimes that's fun to explore how investing with you 
is going to actually save them money in the long run. Uh, one of the other objections that comes up a lot is, I don't know if I have the time. I mean, get curious. Tell me more about that. When it comes to your vision, what is actually important right now? One of the things we talk about in coaching training is that we see our clients as whole, perfect humans. They are not broken. They're just lost. And as coaches, we are way showers. And we can say to the client, I can see your potential and I, that I, and I know that you can't quite see it yet. And I just want to tell you what I see in the future. You know, my job is not to persuade you here. What is coming up for me when I hear you talk is that if you decide that now is not the time, this dream could die right here after we hang up. I see a vision in you that's bigger than you can see right now. I am a yes to your vision. Are you? Even as I say that, it gives me goosebumps. And I, I'm just so grateful to be able to do this work because us nurse coaches, we literally hand people dreams. We literally hand people their dreams. People's lives change completely when they meet us. And this is the gateway to that. You are the gatekeeper to their dream. Now, not everybody is ready to hire a coach. You're going to have no's. In fact, you'll probably have a lot more no's than yeses in the beginning. But it's your job to learn this process. It is your job to become an artist at this enrollment process, at the successful nurse coach method. This is a method that you can learn, that you can practice. After you've done 20 proposals, guess what? You're a heck of a lot better at overcoming objections and navigating resistance. There will come a point in your practice where you will love sales calls. I love sales calls. I love them. I have been coaching um, this particular niche of new nurse coaches in private practice. I've been coaching this niche for two and a half years. I have, I see what's possible. I have no doubt in my ability. I can't make my clients do things, but I definitely can hold that vision in front of their face. So it gets really uncomfortable if they don't decide to go for it. So um, after every powerful conversation and every powerful conversation number two and proposal, we reflect and we learn from it. And in our coaching programs, we make space for that, right? We make space to do a worksheet and really reflect and say, gosh, I could have done this better or, oh, I wish I would have said this. And that's how we learn. You'll have good proposals, you'll have bad proposals, and you'll have okay proposals. That's totally normal. It's natural when you're practicing a new skill. You know, I think that it took me 18 months to not get nervous before proposals. And if you think about in the nursing world, how long did it take for you to show up? If, if you, like I was an ICU nurse. How long did it take you to show up to your shift and not be nervous? And maybe, maybe we never get there. But it takes time, right? It takes time to become proficient. This is n not any different. Okay, we're at 35 minutes here, so I don't want to go much longer, but I do want to recap what our method is and, um, and then also invite you into our free Facebook group. It's called The Successful Nurse Coach, and you are welcome to ask any questions there and be supported in our community of amazing nurse coaches. So first part of The Successful Nurse Coach method is connecting. You either connect in line or on person. And after you connect in a natural, authentic way that feels good for you, then you invite. You invite people into coaching conversations to experience what coaching is. We give one to two hours free coaching to any person that we invite. We build our entire practice by serving our community. We give our time and our energy freely before we ever ask for one penny. This is a service-based model. After you invite, you invite your people into powerful conversation number one. And if they're a good fit and they're game, you invite them into powerful conversation number two. At the end of powerful conversation number two, with permission, you ask them if they want to know what it would look like to keep going. Then, after you say your offer, you navigate their resistance that you expect and you go overcome the objections that are not a surprise and you come from a place of service. The goal at the end of powerful conversation number two is to get them to a hell yes or a hell no. Don't let it be a maybe. A maybe is a no. And they need to, to it's just as powerful for them to say no than it is for them to say yes. But a maybe is a really lazy way to not take a stand for themselves and be and not take a stand with you. 
And as a coach, it's a really lazy way to say, okay, well, I'm always here. If you ever want coaching, just let me know. Um, that's a really lazy and not of service way to handle a maybe. So your goal and your job is to, from a place of service, get them to an empowered no, if it's a no, and get them, or get them to a hell yes and a commitment if they're a, if they're a yes or a commitment. All right, guys, that was a whole lot packed in like a fire hose. I just delivered it to you. But that's the method that we teach. It's the math method that we really, really believe in. And, um, you know, our, our method has you coach for two hours with every potential lead. And what that does as a new nurse coach is it gets some hours underneath your belt. The more hours that you coach, the better you become. The more hours that you coach, the more confident you become. And then at some point, you might choose to change this and go into just a one call um, method where it's just a normal discovery call. Like a lot of, of coaching programs teach, there's nothing wrong with that. But what we find for us nurses who are bleeding hearts and just want to help the world, we do better if we serve first. It just goes more with our archetype. It goes more with our, our um, wanting to learn, to perfect, to be better. And there's no reason that you can't earn when you learn. If you're in certification right now and you're listening to this, we, Shelby and I actually believe that towards the end of your certification is the best time to hire a business coach and get started. Um, don't wait until you certify. You don't have to wait for anything. If your life allows it, have some overlap because a lot of your pro bono clients would do well if they kept going with you. And even if you're new, you can keep earning while you're still learning, while you're still getting your, the hours underneath you. Um, so I hope this was incredibly valuable to you. I wished I had somebody who had set this out for me when I was in my certification. It would have saved me a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of tears, and I would have helped a lot more people in that first year. All right, guys, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. 